It doesn't matter if you've never heard of the racism index before. Now that I mentioned it, you already know that Christians score crazy high on it. Of course, we've known for a long time that religious people are way more likely to be racist than non-religious people. But until now, we've kind of had to hedge our bets when we point that out, right? Because religiosity is correlated with lower incomes, lower education levels, living in rural areas. And all of those things are also heavily associated with racism. So sure, the association could be because religion makes you racist, but it could also be the, you know, the many things that combine to make a person religious also often combine to make a person racist. Plenty of data exists to tease out those correlations, but you'd need to be a hell of a lot more savvy with statistical analysis than me to do it. Well, lucky for us, Robert P. Jones is a lot more savvy with statistical analysis than me. And that's a damn good thing because he's the CEO of the Public Religion Research Institute and really wouldn't otherwise be qualified for that shit. And after noticing that survey after survey showed that religious people were more likely to be racist, he decided to do all the statistical analysis required to show which direction the arrow of causation was going. Now, this analysis starts, of course, with the racism index, because you can't exactly just call people up and ask how much they hate black people on a scale of one to seven. Even if you could count on them being honest, many of the most pernicious forms of racism aren't conscious. Right, like the, the people who start sentences with, I'm not racist, but actually believe both halves of those statements. So Jones needs a slightly more sophisticated tool. So he comes up with a questionnaire that asks questions like, do systematic barriers make it harder for minorities to succeed in America? Right. Or um, is the Confederate battle flag more a symbol of racism or a symbol of Southern heritage? All of these questions are phrased as matters of opinion, but obviously they have right and wrong answers. And the wrong answers are the racist ones. So the racism index is just a number from zero to one, where zero means you got all the questions wrong and one means you got them all right. Once you've got that, all you need is a big sample along with some other basic demographic information. And once he had that, Jones showed pretty much definitively that it is not a case of covariance. It is not a case of racism wanting to cloak itself in religious garb for the sake of legal protection. According to Jones, and more importantly, one of the most robust data sets ever assembled on the subject, Christianity makes you racist. And the more Christian you are, the more racist you tend to be. I should caveat this with the fact that he was only pulling Americans on this. And, and while it might seem tempting to extrapolate out to the rest of Christendom, America has a unique history when it comes to race relations. Uh, in fact, it, when you think of the history of American theology, it's kind of inevitable that this would be the case even today. For hundreds of years, American theology in the South had to coexist alongside slavery and needed moral justification for it the whole time. Right. And even after that, it needed to coexist alongside and reinforce notions of white supremacy to justify segregation, lynchings and all the other manner of officially sanctioned racism. And while it might have been better in the north, that doesn't mean it was good. It's not like antebellum churches in the north were integrated. Look, look this is a country where everything still has lingering racism embedded in it. Our housing codes, our justice system, our textbooks, our process of electing presidents. Why would it be any different in our theology? And unlike pretty much any other example of systemic racism, there's no way to hold theology accountable. There's no way to force it in the right direction or even nudge it in the right direction. And sure, religions could just do that shit themselves. But if you want to see how well they're doing, just walk into any church in the goddamn country and tell me how many different races are represented. In his new book, White Too Long, The Legacy of White Supremacy in American Christianity, Jones highlights several cornerstones of modern evangelical theology and shows how they arise from overt attempts to codify the cultural supremacy of white people. Now, I'm no expert in theology, so I couldn't do the arguments justice, but he takes basic principles like the focus on one's personal relationship with Christ, the, the Protestant work ethic, the extra biblical notion that God helps those who help themselves. And he shows how they both stem from racism and continue to reinforce racism today. And by the way, Jones is not an atheist looking to discredit American Christianity with its sordid past. He's a devout Southern Baptist trying to reform his faith with an honest reckoning. Because for him, there's something real at the core of all of it, right? He thinks that if you strip away all the theological accoutrements, there would still be some core essence to the religion that you could build new ones upon. But you and I know better, right? When you strip away all the packaging from a religion, there's nothing left. To change a religion's theology is to change the religion. There is no truth at the center of the lie. Hell, there is nothing at the center of the lie. 
So for a person like Jones, blinded as he is by his own belief, he sees a ship of faith that was hijacked by bigotry and must be wrested back from those mutineers. But in reality, there was never any other destination. From the time the fucking boat was built, it was always a vehicle for bigotry.